All right, today we're going to do some more Photoshop awesomeness. Um, this series is called How to Make Your Girlfriend Hot. Um, this is a one technique in this series. Um, I'm not going to cover all of them in one video because there would be too many. Um, the potential of all the different things that you might need to do for, to um, make your girlfriend more hot in a particular photograph is um, really endless. Uh, but in this one, we're going to focus in on skin and making skin look beautiful and smooth and whatnot. And this particular technique is amazing. This technique is used by professionals in the industry with major magazines. Trust me, I, I work and know a lot of these people. And this is the technique um, to keep in your tool belt. Um, it's one that you'll use over and over for female subjects. Now. There is a difference between female subjects and male subjects when you're talking about skin. So I'll do a series on how to make your man hot too as well. Um, uh, but you know, for this particular series, we're going to stick with females. And just to give you an example, you know, women generally um, in their photographs um, need smooth, kind of soft, glowing skin. Whereas men, on the other hand, you very often will want more detail, more um, more visuals on the pores of their skin, etc. So you do treat um, your subjects differently in how you do your post processing, and that's why I, I distinguish between the two. Um, but again, for this one, we're going to stick with women and making um, uh, their skin look as beautiful as possible without looking unrealistic. So let's just get straight into it. I, I want to show you this technique. It's something that um, you'll be able to do yourself pretty easily. It's about a uh, moderate level, maybe um, you know blue belt, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and work with Brittany here. And this is a model that I shot uh, not too long ago. And you can see she already has pretty nice skin. She's a beautiful girl. Um, but she doesn't have perfect skin and if you zoom in and take a look at her face you can start to see some of the blemishes or at least where it breaks up and she starts to look human <laughs> and uh, you know so you can see some of the um, um, the raised uh, bumps here and then some shadow problems here and that's a, a photographer's problem etc so we're gonna go ahead and deal with that through this technique okay so I'm gonna back out just a little bit I still want to be close because I want to be able to see um, you know the details of what it is I'm doing so the first thing we are going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to drag it down here. And now you can see I have a new layer, a new uh, copy of it at the top. And the, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and apply a high pass filter. Now a high pass filter is, is pretty sweet. This is something I do um, with one of my sharpening techniques. Um, but for this particular application, it works nicely for skin. So I'm going to go down to other and I'm going to say high pass. And I'm going to do a radius of 9. Now, sometimes I use 10 or 10.5. I don't usually go up above 10.5. Um, but for this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and use 9. And then I'm going to click OK. Now, next, with the same layer selected, I want to go ahead and go back up to Filter. And I want to do Surface Blur. And with the Surface Blur, I want a radius of 3. If I went above 9, I would probably start to do a radius of 4, and I would top out at 4.5 if I, if I went up to 10.5 on the previous step. But for this, um, when, I did, when I did 9 before on the um, high pass filter, here on the surface blur, I'm going to do a radius of 3. And threshold pretty much is always around 15, so you can go ahead and just leave that. And then click OK. And now the next thing that I want to do is I want to invert this particular layer. And on the Mac, it's Command-I, and on the PC, it's Control-I, or you can do it up under the layer menu as well. But I'm going to go ahead and click Control-I. You can see something changed there. And the next thing that I need to do to start to bring this effect into play is I need to change my blending mode, but just for this layer. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and change the blending mode to Linear Light. And linear light is one of these blending modes that is usually used for making um, tonal and color adjustments in your uh, photograph. Now you can see this still looks kind of weird. Um, but one thing I want to point out is, again, with a lot of blurring techniques um, that you'll find on the web and, and where you kind of separate the amateurs from the professionals is um, with the other blurring techniques, what they'll do it generally is just a quick surface blur and then they'll mask it off and then try and blend it back into the original photo. But what happens with those types of techniques is um, you get the um, nice soft skin tone that you want, but what you don't get is you don't retain the texture of the skin. And that starts to make it look really plasticky and really fake. 
Um, and, and again, that's just really where the difference between the professional and the amateur. Um, and in this example, you can see while this down here around the eyes and stuff looks ridiculous, don't worry, we'll take care of that. Um, but what you can see is on the skin, you can still see the texture in there. And we're going to retain that texture um, in our final product. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, I'm going to zoom back out one. The next thing you want to do is turn your opacity down to about 55, 60%. And I'm going to go ahead and go with 55 for now. And then we're going to dial this in at the end to exactly where we want it. Okay. And then once we've done that, I'm going to click off opacity. Now what I want to do is I want to mask this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and mask it. And go over here. And I want to apply black. There we go. Okay, so now I'm back to kind of the original, um, the original look, the original image, I should say. And what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take my brush tool, and I'm going to zoom way in, and I'm going to start to um, blend back in this particular layer uh, through a masking technique. So I need to make sure that I am on white for color, and now I will just start to blend it back in and you can see right away what's going on and how beautiful the technique is um, so you also want to make sure that you're using a soft brush I didn't really note that but um, a soft brush is with your hardness all the way cranked down or at least under 25 percent I think that's the official Adobe definition of a soft brush um, which is what I have here so and then I'm just gonna go through and I am going to brush over all of the skin areas um, that I want to apply this technique to. Now, I do want to say one thing that's pretty important that you um, will hear other professionals talk about um, with regard to these techniques um, in skin, and that is you don't want to brush over um, any kind of sharp lines or details in the face. So, for example, you don't want to um, go over her eyes um, with this technique because uh, what it'll do is it'll start to blur that out and you don't want that obviously you want that to look sharp so I did a control Z there to go back but more importantly you don't want to do it around the edges of let's say her nostril or her lips um, because it'll give it a fake look and it won't give it that sharp look that you want or that natural look that you want so make sure and avoid those areas just get the areas um, that are you know skin and um, um, you know where you see some of the um, the tonal and, and pores and, and skin defects and again I, this takes a little while to get down perfectly I'm using a Wacom tablet um, and pen for my work um, but you can do this very easily with the mouse um, it's just not as sexy to do of course but <laughs> it uh, works just as well so I'm gonna go through here and around the eye and again I'm doing this kind of quick just to show you so that I don't have to sit here and bore you forever um, but you get the idea on what's going on now the other thing you can do to make sure that you're covering um, all the right spots is you can go ahead and turn on your mask layer so that you can see the work you're doing um, and to do that you would just click the um, backslash key on your um, on your keyboard and as you can see now that I've done that you can see all the areas where I've actually applied the technique and again I'm gonna avoid oops that's a little too much I'm gonna avoid I get a smaller brush so that I can avoid um, the eyelashes and the eyebrows and things like that so this actually is pretty nice um, to do it in this kind of mode so that you can you know more quickly go through things and I'm gonna do a little larger brush so I can get the larger pieces of um, real estate here and there we go and again I'm going to avoid that line in her smile so it stays nice and sharp now you can apply this to both arms you know it just depends on the person's skin um, in terms of how much work they actually need um, obviously a model is generally going to have um, better skin than than your average person um, so you you know so you apply a lighter version of the technique etc it's 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 just up to you and um, you know what you want your final product to look like so the other nice thing about this is it'll take hot spots out of a f photograph so if you don't know what hot spots are they're basically um, a flash reflection 
or an oily spot in somebody's um, skin, etc. And this technique generally works pretty well with removing those um, as long as they're not too harsh. So again, I'm going to go up here. Paint most of this. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to back out a little bit and take a look. Um, I could do some more work in here. Again, without hitting the line around her nostril or on her smile here. And then, you know, you could do her arm and whatnot, but for the, for the, um, for the purposes of this tutorial and time, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at that. So now I'm going to go ahead and click the um, uh, backslash again so that we can get back to how this looks. Now, again, as I come in close, you can see that the skin tone or the skin texture is still there. It's still present. It still looks natural. That's actually what her um, skin tone looks like. So uh, this is where, at this point, you're, for the most part, done um, with skin. And what you want to do now is basically just dial it in to wherever it is you want. So let's keep it where it's at right now at 55% um, opacity, just so that I can show you the kind of before and after. Let's come back just a little bit. And here's... Here's obviously the after, and now I'm going to unclick it so that you can see the before. And you can see right away the, a very dramatic difference. I mean, she's a beautiful girl here, um, but she's not nearly as beautiful as um, when everything's kind of smoothed out a little bit. Now, you could crank up your opacity, and it starts to break up at a certain point, you can see. And you can also crank it down to whatever it, whatever it is that works for your particular subject. Um, I think for this one, 40, 44, 45 is probably the right level. So I'm going to come come back. Yeah, and I'd say that looks a lot more natural. Um, it's you know it's not a point and shoot camera kind of natural, but it's definitely ready for um, a magazine. And and again, I dial that in. You know, probably somewhere between um, 40 and 45. I think it's set at 45 now. And that is one of the most amazing skin smoothing techniques you will find um, with Photoshop. And this works, uh, I believe, all the way back down to Photoshop CS3 um, up till current Photoshop, which is uh, CS5, almost CS6. So with that, um, take some of your favorite photographs of your girlfriend or your wife or whomever and um, apply some of this Photoshop awesomeness and um, show off your skills. Take care and look for more videos and please subscribe.